Hi, welcome to what could be the second last episode of Inkscape for Teachers as we approach our 100th episode. I think this is uh, number 99. I'll be showing you how to create this forces or dynamics diagram, inclined plane diagram, which you could perhaps use in um, specialist maths or physics. So I'll scroll across here into a blank area of the canvas and show you how I did that. First of all for the inclined plane, a right angle triangle, probably easiest done under view page grid. You can set up the page grid using document properties and new grid, new rectangular grid if you need to. With the Bezier pen tool and ensure that I've got snap to grid on and I can click, click, click and then close the shape. You can see the red node and enter. I'll thicken that up to about 0.7. There's my right angle triangle. I'll get rid of the grid by going view page grid. And now I need to draw an object. Let's say use the rectangle tool and drag out a rectangle. Give it a fill and drag it into position. Now you can see it's not parallel to the plane. There are different things you can do. You can just click it a second time and rotate and try and get it by eye by control Z or you can drag the rotation center to this corner here it's not snapping because I haven't got that tool turned on now if I do it, it snaps to the corner and now as I rotate, it rotates about that corner so that might be one thing that you want to do you might want to send it to the back if you want to see the outline of the triangle better so we can get that one way or another in position zoom out a little bit now the forces diagram Let's do gravity, clicking the center of the shape, it's snapping, click, control, click and enter. I'll just thicken that up as well, about 0.7. And I can uh, put an arrow head on that if I want. I'm just going to uh, hold off on that for a minute. I'll show you why a bit later. Now I want to do components here, one perpendicular to the plane and one parallel to the plane. Let's start with parallel to the plane. B for Bezier pen tool. I'll click. And I'll just snap the path there. I'll click. Don't worry about the length. And enter. Selection tool. And obviously that segment is now parallel to the plane. So I'll click. I'll snap that on there. Thicken that up. 0.7. Now I'll do one perpendicular to the plane by just rotating that. Control D to duplicate first. Rotate 90 degrees. That's perpendicular to the plane. I'll drag that up to there and hold it down the control or drag that corner now it's not snapping as it hits that so I'll just check uh, what's going on there uh, perhaps if I zoom in a bit sometimes helps control there it is now this one I can control drag that again just zoom in a bit and there it snaps as long as you have to zoom in to uh, encourage Inkscape to snap correctly so there's my nice uh, forces triangle there. But what about the arrows? If you put the arrow heads on, I'll just show you on one. So that one, if I put an arrow head on here, and if it goes on the wrong end, just try the other end there. And see it actually protrudes a bit past the line. And that's um, because if I click on here, the end of the line is still there, but the arrow head protrudes. So I don't uh, like that. You can adjust the nodes, but um, by clicking in or tapping in for the node tool clicking this and dragging, so you run the risk of getting your arrow out of alignment but you, you can do that if you want or control Z control Z again to get that arrow off what I'm going to do is put an arrow in the middle of this with it selected if I click one of the nodes and then shift click the other node I'll add a node that will add in the middle it should have, let me try again click that click that end, shift click that end and plus for a node and it's not doing it because I've selected uh, let me just see I'll drag that off a bit, maybe it was interfering over there end for node tool, click shift click add a node, it's added it in the centre now I'll drag it back into the position There's a bit too much going on with a node in the middle 
this section here on the arrows puts it on the middle node if there is one, if there isn't it doesn't do anything so if I click there you see there's an arrow and that doesn't interfere with the end of the line so you might prefer that likewise over here I'll just drag that over here and N for node tool select both nodes add a node in the middle add an arrow there and you can snap it back into position there likewise this one again I'll drag it out of, over to here in for node tool select them both add one in the middle add an arrow there oops wrong way around so I'll do the other direction there it is bit of trial and error and drag it to snap back in position there okay now the normal reaction force of course is the opposite to this one so I'll control D and I'll reflect it in both axes and drag it up there now that might be one you want to put an arrow head on because there's nothing else going on there so I'll click on that take the arrow off the middle and put it on the end you can see I've got a nice forces diagram there if I want to put a fill in the inclined plane I can do that I want to darken up that shape perhaps uh, that's a bit better and now I can start to put some text labels on now I just used uh, the text tool click say N for normal reaction change it to italic if you want to be uh, technically right in typesetting terms and you can drag that to whatever size it'll be a bit big but I'll you zoom in then drag down and get more precise control control C for that control V over here text tool and I'll type MG space sign space now theta the unicode is 03B8 so control U 03B8 and enter and get a theta now I don't want that italic so highlight control I to unitalicize it and these gaps might be a bit big so I'll drop them down to say 10 <coughs> excuse me just you know about half and that doesn't look too bad and one of the great things about Inkscape is the control over rotation of text so easily click on it a second time rotation handles appear and you can drag that to line things up and make it more obvious that that goes with that component uh, should have uh, copied it first but it doesn't matter control C Control V over here, text tool. I might just click on the end there and write cos and then backspace over the sign and that's that component here. But again, I can click a second time and rotate something like that. You can get more precise control by zooming in, but that doesn't look too bad. And similar, similarly, I can label a theta there and and so forth. Oh, the MG. Uh, if I click the N, Control C, Control V, Text Tool, MG. Go back and wipe out that. So there's the uh, gravity force. Okay. Now, uh, of course, you can demonstrate if you've got this diagram in class. You can talk about uh, this force being replaced by these two components. So. I'll so I delete that and these two components replace it with this one it's cancelled out with this one delete and this is all we've got left so effectively we've got this dragging the object down the plane if I take off the snapping tool I can draw that there so you can sort of do a bit of uh, simple animation I guess in effect anyway that's how to produce a uh, physics slash specialist maths diagram using Inkscape thanks again for watching